Hello, good evening, and welcome to this Senior World. I am Tingni Tim Hoki, bringing you today's news. Today's top stories include Three members' committee formed to probe oil spill from power station in Lame Hong. NGO Coordination Committee opposes abolition of free movement regime along Indian Myanmar border. India reported a spy of 609 cases and six. India reported a spy of 609 cases and six new deaths in 24 hours. News in details. The Manipur government, under the order of the governor, has formed a three-member committee to investigate the significant leakage of oil at Le Mahong. The incident, which resulted in oil-contaminating streams in the Infal Valley, prompted swift action from the state government. The governor of Manipur ordered the formation of a three-member committee to delve into the circumstances surrounding the leakage. This committee is chaired by Asutosh Kumar Sinha, IPS Additional DGP, Intelligence Manipur, with Dr. Silas Kumar Chauraisya, IAS Commissioner Kam, Secretary Power, GOM, and M. Pradeep Singh, IPS Additional Secretary Home, Government of Manipur, serving as members. The committee's mandate includes investigating the cause of the leak, examining contributing factors, considering any relevant issues that may arise during the inquiry, and proposing both immediate and long-term safety measures for the power station. They are tasked with submitting their findings to the government within 15 days of their appointment. This proactive response underscores the gravity of the situation and the government's commitment to addressing the environmental impact of the oil spill. The committee's formation was reported on January 11, 2024, signaling the urgency with which the Manipur government is treating this ecological concern. On the other hand, the Mayday blames cookies for leakage of heavy fuel oil into streams. Government confirms source of leakage as Le Mahong Power Station. Leakage of heavy fuel from Le Mahong Power Station was witnessed along streams through Kanto Sabal, Sekmai, etc. under Infal West District on Wednesday evening. The video went viral in social media and the Mayday social media users, as usual, were quick enough to react and blame the cookies for the fuel leakage. Some posted the video in social media and claimed that the cookies have thrown away the oil into the streams which flows into major rivers of Manipur to target not only the Maytays but other communities as well. But other communities as well. Some say that the timing of the fuel leakage, even if it is from the power station, is very suspicious as it has never happened in the past, but at times when the state is under conflict. Many express concern that the fuel leakage could reach the rivers and eventually the Loktok Lake as well. Soon after the video went viral, the Secretary of Chief Minister and Geoffrey issued an immediate Letter stating that leakage of heavy fuel from Le Mahong power station has been reported, leading to spillover of the discharge along streams passing through Kanto Sabal, Sekmai, etc., stating that the stream meets in Fall River downstream by flowing through Hurhul, Loitang, Kameng, Iroi Simba, Nambul. Jeffrey requested all concerned to take immediate necessary action to prevent an environmental calamity, making use of all available resources in terms of machinery, manpower, and expertise. Response mechanism, or SOP, for such events may be immediately activated and the Deputy Commissioner shall coordinate in the field until further instructions, the letter added. Reacting 
to the incident, Youth Forums for Protection of Human Rights appealed to the Water Resource Department to find an alternative mean of water sources for the people and restore water crisis in the area the earliest. In its release, YFPHR also stated that a strong investigation is needed on how the oil spill into the stream and that investigation is also needed against the army posted at Lemahong for making it happen. <clears throat> the largest civil organization in Mizoram opposed the center government decision to fence the Indo-Myanmar border as it would remove the existing free movement regime along the international border. The Central Committee of the Young Mizo The Central Committee of the Young Mizo Association, also known as Center Young Mizo Association, issued a statement that meeting of the Executive Committee of the organization held on Monday had thoroughly discussed the plan to fence the Indo-Myanmar border and end the FMR. They are the center to reconsider this sensitive decision as the FMR introduced in the year 1968, grand people living within the 16 kilometers on both sides to travel into its territory without visa. This plays a crucial role in maintaining the ethnic and cultural ties of ethnic Mizo tribes living on either side of the border. Since the free movement regime has been instrumental in recognizing and strengthening the the brotherhood and integrity of the Mizo people, the proposed abolition of the FMR and the implementation of boulder fencing would have a detrimental effect on these vital ethnic and cultural connections, the statement said. So we firmly believe that the scrapping of the FMR and the erection of boulder fencing would disrupt the harmonious coexistence and cultural exchange that has been integral to lives of the Mizo people, the CYMA also said in the statement. With this in consideration, the organization urged the center to revise its decision to ensure that the FMR is not scrapped and boulder fencing is not erected along the Indo-Myanmar border. CYMA also said that it stood in solidarity CYMA also said that it stood in solidarity with the Mizoram government in opposing the move to fence the Indo-Myanmar border and scrap the FMR. India shares a 1,643-kilometer-long boulder with Myanmar, which passes through the states of Arunachal Pradesh, 520km, Nagaland, 215km, Manipur, 398km, and Mizoram, 510km. People on either side of the boulder have familiar and ethnic ties which prompted the FMR arrangement in the 1970s. It was last revised in 2016. During his meeting with the Prime Minister Narendra Modi and External Affairs Minister S. Jai Sankar last week, the Mizoram Chief Minister, Laldu Omar claimed that the Mizoram Myanmar boulder was created by the colonial British government without consulting the ethnic Mizo living in that area. Any move to fence the Indo Myanmar boulder is unacceptable as the British divided the Mizo lands into two parts, and fencing of the present Indo Myanmar will amount to acceptance of the democration met by the British. The Home Affairs said on January 2 that the sender had planned to fence a 300-kilometer-long boulder with Myanmar and scrap the FMR and notice will be issued within the next few days as a survey for the boulder areas were completed with the help of drones. It is important to note that the sender met this move following the complaint submitted last year by the Mayday Manipur government. A spike of 609 COVID cases on January 12 is reported in India with an active case load of 3,368. The death toll reached 5,33,412, including six new deaths in the span of 24 hours, one from Karnataka, two from Kerala, and three from West Bengal. The rise in cases is mainly due to the declining temperatures and Omicron subvariant JN1, which has crossed 1,000 marks, with Uttar Pradesh becoming the latest state to join the list of 16 states.
as reported by Times of India. The country's recovery rate is 98.81%, with a fatality rate of 1.81%. 682 cases of the JN1 subvariant have been reported in 12 states. India has administered 220.67 crore COVID-19 vaccine doses. The World Health Organization had warned of the virus' ongoing threat, recording 10,000 fatalities in December. District Hospital Churachanpur, Lamka Monthly Performance Report of December 2023, saw that over 7,969 patients visited the outpatient department, out of which 3,366 were male and 4,633 were female. Within December 2023, the district hospital has 21 fatalities, where two are minors, two infants, and 17 adults with different disease. The minor OT department also reported that a total of 100 minors undergo minor operation and 137 children were administered major operation. As included in their first 100 days of work by the new ruling Joram People's Movement Party, the Mizoram government today set up a boundary committee which will look after various issues, especially those relating to the Assam Mizoram boulder. In the new boundary committee, Home Minister K. Sabdanga has been appointed chairman. Environment, Forest and Climate Change Minister Lal Thang Sanga is the Vice Chairman of the Boundary Committee, while Home Secretary H. Laleng Moya is the Member Secretary. As per report of the Indian Today Northeast, Boundary Committee members include Advisor to CM Lal Monpuya Punte, Chief Secretary, DZP Government, T. Romana College Assistant Professor Joseph K. Lal Fakjuala, one representative each from political parties, MNE, INC, BJP, AAP, and JPM. One representative each from NGOs, NGOCC, CYMA, MUP, MHI, MJP, and MSU. And JSC on Inner Line Forest Reserve Demand, Mizoram representatives. Mizoram Chief Minister Laldu Oma is likely to meet his Assam counterpart Himanta Biswa Sarma this month to discuss border issues between the two states. A discussion between them is expected during the Northeastern Council plenary session to the help plenary session to be held in Meghalaya's capital Silong on January 19, he said. The two leaders will discuss the bolder issues to resolve the long-standing dispute between the two states, the official said. The proposed NEC plenary session will be chaired by Union Home Minister Amit Sa. Mizoram shares a 164.6 km long boulder with Assam. The dispute had taken an ugly turn in July 2021 when police forces of the two states exchanged fire along the interstate boundary leading to the death of six policemen and a civilian from Assam. The work Kukizo Intellectual Council expresses strong objection and resentment over the representation of Government of India, Ministry of Tribal Affairs, for deletion of Chin Kuki from the list of scheduled tribe of Manipur. In its letter to Arjun Munda, Minister of Tribal Affairs, Government of India, the War Kukizo Intellectual Council states that the ethnic Jin Kuki, also known as Kukizo, also known as Kuki Tribal Committee of India, has been indigenous hill tribes of Indian subcontinent with documented history since 90 BC to 30 AD, resisting the British imperial regime from 1777 resisting the British imperial regime from 1777 AD. Forefathers of the Kukizo resisted the British colonial supremacy for long and at last resorted to Kuki Rebellion 1917-1919 in defense of our ancestral land for consecutive three years. The letter further reads, The British Crown, as a punishment of Kuki Tribal Warrior Committee, trifurcated us into three international boundaries, 
India in 1947, Burma, now Myanmar in 1948, and East Pakistan, now Bangladesh in 1972 respectively. Rendering us into minority of the minorities in all these three countries, our forefathers joined hands with Netaji Subhas Chandra Bose during 1942-1945 in the Indian National Army INA or Ajat Hind Force for the freedom and independence of India from the bondage of British colonial regime. We, the Kuki people, have endured enough untold pains and anguish over persecutions and genocides continuously from time to time in the past 75 long years after independence from larger and stronger communities. The letter also reads, We are also in utter dismay at the wording your respectable office used upon us as nomadic Chin Kuki, which is derogatory and insulting which a government official like you should not use in the largest democratic country in the world, India. In the light of the above, we earnestly appeal to your respectable office and retract and withdraw your representation reproduced below for kind references and issue a cancellation order. On the 9th of January yesterday, the elder intellectual group of Kangpopi organized a New Year Blessing Prayer program for the Kuki Zhou tribes for the year 2024. The group had a fasting pray, pray The group had a fasting prayer for the betterment of the current conflict and for the Kuki Zhou citizens to acquire separated administration as had been demanded. They also pray for the Kukizo volunteer who stand on duty at the front line and protect their citizens at the cost of their comfort and life. Prayers were also offered for the CSOs, Kuki NP, KSOs, KWU, KOTU, ITLF, MLS, MDCs, MPs, and also the KNO and UPF who are on talk with the government of India. They also cried and prayed for the tribe leaders and refugees who suffered because of the war. The program was held at the residence of one Tangtin Lal Misau at Kangpopi. The Manipur Council of Higher Secondary Education issued the state class 12 examination routine. Starting on February 20, 2024, March to, to March Starting on February 20, 2024 to March 20, 2024, all Class 12 under the Manipur Board are to start the annual examination amidst the ongoing ethnic violence. According to the exam routine, February 20, 2024 will be English subject, Psychology and Music on February 22, MIL including Bengali, Hindi, Mar, Kom, Manipuri, Maula, Mizo, Nepali, Paite, Rongmei, Tangkhu, Tadokuki, Vaipei, Zhou, Gangte, Liangmei. An alternative English, Chemistry, Education and Business Studies on February 26. And Biology and History on February 28. Physics, Political Science and Accountancy on March 2. Different elective languages including Bengali, English, Hindi and Manipuri and Mathematics on March 6. Anthropology and Economics on March 8, Human Ecology and Family Science on March 11, Engineering, Drawing, Sociology, Tangta on March 13, Statistics, Fine Arts and Health and Physical Education on March 18, Geology and Geography on March 18. In concluding, the examination will be Computer Science and Philosophy examination on March 20. The Young Vaipei Association, Zhong Houzhou Block, mended the broken parts of the Paimuk Road in between the Houzim and Jing. The Young Vaipei Association, Zhong Houzhou Block, mended the broken parts of the Paimuk Road in between the Houzim and Jiangpi today at around 10 a.m. Around 150 YVA members joined the social work. The YVA, being a social organization, are deeply concerned about the driving safety of the people and as such, took up the job to mend the broken parts of the roads, to make traveling easier for the public and to avoid accidents. The public greatly appreciate and praise the YVA for their good work.
The free ZNB coaching organized by Mizo Zirlai Paul, Jingkon Pong Brands, which had already started since 10 January, had continued smoothly till today. This free ZNV coaching had been organized mainly for the IDP students who wants to appear ZNV entrance exam. 48 students benefited from it so far. The coaching will continue until 19 January and the ZNV entrance test will be held on the 20th of January 2024, said the MGP Chingkonpang branch. A storm rifle carried out distribution of water storage tanks at Singat village in Chorotanpur district of Manipur. The aim of this initiative was to address the critical need of water being faced by the inhabitants of the undeveloped villages. The subject initiated is the result of deliberate assessment of requirements of local population and village authorities in the remote and undeveloped Sorry, village authorities in remote and undeveloped areas. This initiative will not only address the water deficiency and storage issue being faced by the villagers, but will also keep the local populace administratively stable and satisfied, which will ultimately result in achieving the aim of clean water and disease-free villages in undeveloped areas. The village authorities express their heartfelt gratitude towards Assam Rifles and acknowledge the efforts of Assam Rifles and call them true friends of Northeast people. Total of 399 villagers were benefited by the state. Total of 399 villagers were benefited by the state this initiative. In a decisive triumph, in a decisive tri triumph, in sorry, in a decisive triumph in the North Qatar Hills Autonomous Council elections, the Bharatiya Janata Party emerged victorious, securing 13 out of the 28 seats declared so far in the Dima Hasau district of Assam. The election, the 13th iteration for the council, witnessed fervent campaigning, stringent security measures and active involvement from Assam Chief Minister Himanta Biswa Sarma. According to a report of the Indian Today Northeast earlier today, amidst heightened security, the counting of votes commenced, marking the culmination of a process initiated on January 8. Out of the 28 constituencies, 22 witnessed voting, with six candidates winning uncontested. The Assam State Election Commission identified 100 polling stations as sensitive and 27 as very sensitive, underlining the need for increased vigilance. The deployment of polling officials, including journal magistrates, sector officials, presiding officials and police personnel was executed in two phases to ensure a smooth and secure election process. Assam Chief Minister Himanta Biswa Sarma played a prominent role in the election campaign, actively advocating for the BJP. He focused on promises to elevate health facilities, enhance connectivity, and transform the Hill District into a vibrant tourist destination. Sarma also underscored the government's achievement in restoring transportation links post landslide in 2022 and during the challenging times of the COVID-19 pandemic. The Yemeni Houthi group announced on Friday that U.S. and British forces launched 73 strikes on Yemen, killing five of its fighters. The group's military spokesperson, Yaya Sari, said in a statement, the American-British enemy, in the context of its support for the continuation of the Israeli crimes in Gaza, launched a brutal aggression against Yemen with 73 strikes. Sari said the raids targeted the capital, Sana'a and the government. Sari say the raids targeted the capital Sana and the governorates of Hoideida, Taiz, Haja, and Sada. These attacks led to the death of five Houthi fighters and the injury of six others.
The spokesman added, the U.S. and U.K. carried out missile strikes on Houthi targets in Yemen Thursday night, 11 January. The strikes targeted multiple Houthi sites in Yemeni cities controlled by the Iranian-backed group and followed a string of Houthi attacks in the Red Sea on Israeli-bound vessels. U.S. President Joe Biden said on Friday he ordered the strikes in direct response to unprecedented Houthi attacks against international maritime vessels in the Red Sea. That is all for today's news and have a pleasant evening ahead.